Good afternoon. My name is Klaus Giese and I'm the Chief Scientific Officer and I'm presenting today Silence Therapeutics on the German Science Day in, in Berlin. Let's start where silence is today. Silence is the industry leader in the development of RNA-based therapeutics based on two distinct proprietary platforms. The first platform comprises a new class of inhibitor molecules and the second specific carrier molecules or transporters to introduce these new class of inhibitors into distinct cell lines or cell types and organs in, in humans. The company is listed in London and has operations centralized in Berlin. The technology platforms already have received strong validation through large partnerships with pharma and biotech companies. We, the vision is to build a very strong pipeline together with our partners for, to target unmet medical needs with a large commercial potential. We strongly believe that we can develop with our partners the first RNAi blockbuster. On the next slide, the outstanding potential of this technology is outlined in this uh, cartoon. <coughs> it is the first time that it is possible to target all genes in the human body. This was not possible before because most drugs today are targeted against the protein and this means the protein has to require a specific pocket or feature that a small molecule can bind or it has to be secreted in the bloodstream that an antibody can actually inactivate it. The most important feature is that we can, with this technology now, target all genes in the human body, even undruggable targets. This was not possible before. The reason being is that we are blocking or destroying in, in, in a very specific step in the DNA expression paradigm from DNA, RNA, protein, we are destroying the message Therefore, we don't allow the protein to be expressed. This high potential was recognized by the award of the Nobel Prize in 2006 to the inventors, Fire and Mello. Second, this potential was also recognized and RNAi technology was voted the third revolution in drug development after small molecules and antibodies. We feel because of the strong potential that we have a strong commercial potential similar to our monoclonal antibodies or even beyond. If you go to the next slide, this shows you the inhibitor class called ATO-RNAi. We believe these inhibitors are the best in class for a variety of reasons. First of all, the molecules we are working with are double-stranded oligonucleotides which have been protected against nuclease degradation. Second, these molecules have a very strong potential to bind with high specificity to the target mRNA. And third, these molecules are not introducing unwanted side effects, for example, immune stimulation, cytokine storm, tolerance sector activity, or interferon response. These features have been already shown in 300 patients which have been treated in different clinical settings. Another very important feature of this new class of inhibitors is it's a very fast preclinical development uh, and I will come back to this in a minute. If you go to the next slide, not only do we have a very powerful inhibitor class, we also have very powerful transporter systems, which is another breakthrough delivery technology because these transporter systems can take the inhibitor and bring it to specific sites in the human body. For example, the Atuplex deliver a transporter delivers the molecules to the tumor vasculature, the DACC transporter delivers the oligo into the lung, and the DBTC transporter into the liver. Now how does it look? This shows in the slide number six. Here we show that this novel lipid-based formulation called DACC will deliver the potent RNAi molecule specifically to the lung. This gives Silence and its partner a huge opportunity to address unmet medical need, including lung cancer. The next slide is Silence DPTC delivery system. It's a similar picture, but now you can see this transporter delivers the oligonucleotide specifically into the liver. And also here we have a huge potential because there are so many diseases in the liver, including liver cancer. 
the high potential of the in inhibitor class r 2 i plus the transporter systems have already been acknowledged by a large number of collabora collaborations with Big Pharma and Biotech, for example with Pfizer, with AstraZeneca, then Nippon Sumitomo, Novartis, Quark, and recently we have signed another top 10 pharma company and several small biotech companies. Not only do we have these very lucrative collaboration agreements in place, some of them have already yielded in outstanding clinical development results as shown in the pipeline slide on number nine. Today there are five siRNA programs from silence in clinical development, two with Pfizer and Quark, which are at the end of phase two in specific eye diseases, two with Novartis and Quark, which are either in phase, phase two or phase one for specific kidney diseases, and then our own silence internal oncology program called ATO27. You can see in the color market size that all of these indications and diseases have a huge commercially potential, and because silence is a licensor of these technologies, we actually are participating in lucrative milestone and royalty payments. I would now like to spend the rest of this talk describing our own internal ATO27 oncology program. For this program, we're using the third transporter system called Atoplex. Atoplex is a lipid-based drug carrier which will deliver the potent atorna oligo into the tumor vasculature. As a target for our first program, we have selected a protein called PKN3. PKN3 is located in the cellular context as a nodal point in, through which many different signal transduction pathways are channeled and then these signals will lead to tumor growth and metastasis. We and others have shown when we block PKN3 in hyperactivated or deregulated signal transduction pathways like a hyperactivated PRC kinase or a mutant form of RAS or a mutant form of MYC that we can block tumor progression and metastasis. I would like to summarize our preclinical data in the slide R27, the strong preclinical efficacy data. On the right, you see a part of a list, of a long list of preclinical models in which we have tested the efficacy of R27 in enemy models predictive of human diseases. The outcome of these data have been published in peer-reviewed journals and have been presented at national and international conferences. The summary of these data show clearly that when we block PKN3 with other 27 that we can regulate tumor growth and in particular prevent the spread of metastasis. <coughs> we are very pleased that last month we have received a, a manuscript published by Pfizer showing that PKN3 will associate with a specific Rho family member called Rho-C and rho C is one of the most important oncoprotein or tumor promoting molecule known. This validation, I think, will again speak for the validity to use PKN3 as an inhibitor to block tumor growth and metastasis. Because of this successful preclinical data package and the high validation also to third parties, we have started a clinical phase one using other 27 in cancer patients. This clinical phase one study is progressing very, very well. As you can see on the right, we have now uh, finished 10 out of 11 dose escalation levels. We have treated cancer patients multiple times by using single infusions or multiple infusions. And we expect to finish the clinical trial mid in 2012. So let me summarize what we have learned throughout the 27 and give you the outlook how we will progress in the future. We have learned that we can use other 27 to treat solid tumors. We are very pleased that in our clinical phase one study, 11 out of 27 patients today have shown stable disease, which means the tumor has not progressed anymore after treatment with other 27. In addition, we have identified potential biomarkers which will guide us into the next phase, which is clearly a phase two study, and we have already initiated talks with 
onco clinical oncologist and the regulatory authorities to establish a background or platform how we will progress forward. These discussions have led to a two-pronged approach. In one leg, we will use other 27 in combination with standard care. And in the other leg, we will use other 27 as a monotherapeutic agent, for example, in glioblastoma. With these data and the outlook, I would like to finish. And thank you for your attention.